G'day guys, uh, just on the weekend, uh, sitting back, relaxing, so I thought I'd uh, just grab this old stool or chair and uh, it was going to the dump, but uh, it got rescued and uh, a bit of history with this, it was made by my wife's grandfather and his name was uh, William Patrick Brady and he was born on 15th of January 2000, oh not 2000, 1910. So he made this when he was a young fella and uh, gee he could be 60, 80 years old and it's still in really good shape. A little bit of a wobble and we'll strip it back, we'll take all the paint off it and uh, strip it back to its bare bones, see where there's a few fractures in the in the wood and we'll um, we'll glue them up and fix them up. So um, a couple of the tools we'll be using today Got myself a uh, flat screwdriver, not a Phillips set this time, and that'll help me pry off some of this uh, seat cover. Long since, uh, you know, lost all its uh, padding, so there's a few um, just tacks on top, so that'll be easy to take off. And the paint, oh gee, it'll it'll definitely be lead paint. So um, once again, I'll just uh, heat it up. So I did a little bit before just over here. You don't have to get it all off as long as you get the bulk of it off and then you can give it a sand. And the best way to sand it, when you get your sandpaper, tear it into strips and you just sort of work it around and take it back. But first up will be um, obviously putting the heat into it. And the heat just makes the paint bubble. And while it bubbles, either use your, you know, this is an oyster knife, but it's not too much good to me, is it? You've seen me fall over the bloody rocks. But anyway, oyster knife, nice and sharp, good pointy bit to get into all those nooks and crannies. Or the normal scraper, paint scraper. You know, it's got the points on it as well, so you can get into those bits. And you, once you heat it up, you actually work it and uh, gets most of the bulk of the paint off. Like I said, we'll take the cover off it, we'll take it back to the bare timber. Um, we'll have a look what timber it is and I'll put it on slow-mo and get through it. But, um, gee, fascinating man, big tough guy, this uh, William Brady. He was a uh, farmer and all that sort of stuff and one of many kids. And um, he, was a, he was a carpenter and, you know, quite capable bloke. And uh, he, made, he made the Port Alma jetty. It was made out of timber back in those days and uh, putting in all those big logs and... So there you go guys, just about finished now. Um, I've uh, put a bit of trim on it, so I went down to Bunnings and bought this stuff, uh, just five bucks. Just run it around the outside to give it a bit of a decorative overview. And uh, I also put down some, um, I don't know, a bit of lemon x sort of stuff on top. And uh, while I was doing it, um, anyway, I got to painting it rather than uh, trying to get it back to the proper timber. It was a bit of cracked and all that sort of stuff, so I had to put some repairs on it. And it uh, got me thinking again. Well, Pa was, uh, that's that William Brady. He was uh, born in 1910, and he probably made this when he was about 20 odd. So that, what's that make it, 1930? So 70 years to there. And he died when he was 102. So, um, and 2020 now, so 70. Like it's easy, 90 years old this table. So, got a couple of the old recipe books out again just to cover it over, eh? And uh, 
Anyway, nearly finished. I'll take off the bit of the paint and protector. Oh, it's come up pretty good. There you go, that's what she looks like on top. And, um, gee, got a doily. Put a flower on it. There you go. You can go down and buy a couple of these things from the old shops and whatever and do them up there. Pretty bloody easy to do, I eh? like I mean. Anyway, I reckon I'll put that in the house. I'll take a photo of it when I'm in there. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.